afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything amazing propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master of propaganda, your sanctioned source of comedy to entertainment, all here to deliver to onto your eyes and ears another glorious episode. All here to fight on Langerer Sky in the north, it is Jove, fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, taking on the role here of the. Ooh, let's just go with 16th Panzer des Schirmes in the South. It is a Crazy Man fighting for the Soviet Union, Socialism, Comrade Stalin, and the Red Armies. <clears throat> Glorious 7th, 7th Tank Corps. We got Jaeger Infantry, German Infantry, and Spearhead with Triple Infantry versus Armored Assault Guard Motor and Guard Rifle with Double Infantry and Guard Rifle Bulletins there. A heavy conscript bullet start here for Crazy Man. He quickly sets up Sam Maxwell there around his car front here to defend against any fascist incursions and raids there by Job, who's going for the Gunner MU42 start there. Pioneers doubling off east with the MU42 moves towards the munitions, and the Gunner is possibly looking like they're going to hit for the center victory point. Secure that before the Serbs do more sandbags here. Crazy Man there, very much a believer in the power of sandbags, and his men not immediately getting shot to bits. Always good there. Typically, Wehrmacht gonna these tend to struggle versus units behind sandbags when they have to attack. They're generally not in that sense offensive infantry, though they're still better than us for them. So, you know, not bad there. More sandbags here by Crazy Man, very much bitten by a mad sandbagger. Grab the Eastern Point here. More gonna these down the way for Job. And as always, just a quick reminder to like, subscribe, and share. And press that bell button if you do subscribe. So, more likely to get updates about the videos. Gonna these again behind the conscripts, flanking up there with the Cal 90 Ks. They'll. Crazy man's conch there back with their most in their guns. Rifle versus rifle, bolt action versus bolt action. But Job here comes with the final word in the form of name before two. Crazy man there, quick to retreat and avoid any further casualties. Thumbs up there. Some players might have stubbornly stuck it out there, believing in not one step back. Crazy man believes in, you know, let's try to minimize casualties wherever possible. Good fuel point there in the west. Mine's going down there as well very swiftly there by Crazy Man. Very good. Got the point here. Fuel point was secured here. Sam well up there for Joe. Very good. Come these got the western point here. Gain from the risk on his conscripts. At long range, come these typically have the advantage, but versus heavy cover conscripts, that might be slightly against that. And there we go. Joe falling back there, I think, very wisely. The South MD42 getting to work there for Joe. Very good. Push here. Those quickly halted by the conscripts. And when been easily been beaten back, they stand ready to receive the next wave of Joe's forces and successfully thrashed them. In the name of the Soviet peoples. Trouble gun these out there for Jove. Crazy man now, I think, going for some medics here. Yes, indeed. And Molotovs. So he's going to give him a bit slight low and low uh, force presence here compared to Jove at the moment. Of course, he's hoping to make up for this with the uh, more capable conscripts and conscripts that aren't bleeding out as badly. You will need more infantry than there. Got Molotov above there. So I'm reasonably sure the Serbs never called them. That was sort of more of a Finnish thing, you know, called them that because, you know, it's a reference to Molotov, who was the foreign minister of the Soviet Unit back then. So, that will find out there. Are they constantly routed? I suspect they just call them firebombs. The Germans had their own versions, which they just called the Brandflasche or fire bottle. So, little fun fact there. And yes, the Germans used Molotovs. In fact, they industrially made them. They made these sort of uh, particular dark green bottles. With a particular sort of type. Uh, they could be sort of like, you know, you just pull the fuse and they sort of light it off. You'd sort of light a match to go along with it. It's a little fun fact there. It's not exactly what you imagine with the German army, but they very much did. So they had a lot of, shall say, a lower tech solution. But again, it's not really what the Germans are known for. They're sort of more known for the, you know over-engineered solutions as well. Back here, bunker up for Joe. Tech also done. Medics on the way there for Joe. Gunners being slowly shot to bits here by the conscripts. Cons moving about here. Could catch the pioneers. But again, the pioneers at this range. And, well, this is not negative car bars. Could maybe turn that around as well. Still up close. Pioneers do have a chance in particular but they get off some good hits there. And drop some models fast, which is probably there. Go Molotov off. And that's very much going to turn against Joe here. That the pioneers can to fight despite the fires of socialism scorching their uniforms and flesh. Up here, Gunners vs. Conscript, MD42, of course, being used actively to once more deter the Soviet attacker and push him back. Fast take for Crazy Man to Pomp Company, probably going to be a fast Mac, could be a mortar, but it isn't to note here, he's still just sticking with three Conscripts there. Gonna be routed though, tried to get into the cover there, but Crazy Man was having none of it, and in a less than crazy fashion, tossed a Molotov. 
Maximum all the day for Crazy Man to that way to contain and curtail Joe's forces. Gonna send casualties there, good use of the conscript, of course, good aggressive use of the Molotov, quick link to the house, of course. That's only gonna last you so long because there's likely gonna be some Mol Molotovs coming in that general direction. I mean, just chuck it through the side there and, you know, Joe's company is gonna have to get out of there again. Like to make a nice company out of Job and the 16th Panzer of Sean. And we go another Molotov. Joe's gun is getting out there and we go retreating console force back. A lot of action here. Machine gun meanwhile could perhaps be more active but at the same time without anything to the screen for it. I can understand why I wouldn't push it into enemy territory like that. And there you go. Gonna be finally a well, but still Joe's play this keeping Crazy Man from pushing into territory there too far. So, you know. As they say, good defense is you know an offense. Guard motor on the way there for Crazy Man. A nice pick there. So it's been catching on whilst of late. Heavy mortars, guards, riflemen. Don't think he's going to go for the heavy mortars. That there could be some options there, but guards rather than liking to have them with the DP light machine guns. Put pressure on Joe's infantry. Joe committing to the venerable two 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 like to punch a spear wagon. Maxim sitting out there. We go opening up the pioneers, pushing them back. Gonna just move about in the west. Gonna throw in that fuel point. Good move there. At the same time, of course, Crazy Man could consider setting for Joe's fuel point. That'd be a very good move there, I think, for Crazy Man as well. But so far, Joe very much tries to retain his system. And we got Spearhead. We got we got a mortar half track. Wow, you do not see that one very often. There's been a I mean, last month and during November I did see some experimentation with mortar half tracks, but it never really sort of took off to anything. It's kinda like, you know, one of those many prototypes with tanks that happened during the war that yes, you know. Like, they made one or two and tested it out, but it never really amounted to anything beyond that. And this kind of feels like that with the 250 half tracks, strategy, but he chose at it. Looking forward to the 250-7. Nope, by the way, there's also a version of the 250 and the half track that also served like this, are we? Max and Ned pushed back here by the more half track. So, yeah. Can't say anticipated that one. That will, I mean, give Joe some f mobility, of course, in terms of firepower. Can put pressure on infantry and support weapons. Plus his actions and send your power to be just further disruptive. And of course, smoke screens. In the far west, if you're going to be pushed back by the conscripts, Crazy Man's men strike hard. Conscripts moving about here. Friendly is going to move into them. One team so far quit with the LMG 42. Friendly is being hosted by the conscripts. There you go, Molotov off. Molotov half to up as well. Direct hit there, at least on sort of the building, not so much in the occupants. Can't bring up the DP light machine guns. Opening up the gun these, but then heavy cover they're provided graciously by Crazy Man's conscripts. Could have placed a bit closer to the victory point to make it a bit harder for uh, Joe's gun to use it. More tough continues to just drop down death from above. To zooming from the other side as well here, engaging comes on the right flank. Tank tank come on up for Crazy Man. probably going to go for T70 put back against Joe a bit harder as Joe is so far. Overall, oh, I mean, he's just really curtailing Crazy Man's movements quite nicely but just remaining in the offensive, which is obviously a bit risky as the bow up, but if you can handle it, it can be an effect. And there you go. Incendiary barrage on the maximum. First shot goes a bit too far. Second shot catches the maximum there, at least the gunner in something very, very hot. And there you go. He's going to need to get that fast. He's about to get wiped out though. Three kills so far in the mortar half track. Half the maximum crew is gone. It's probably a coincidence. Contra they push back, but the two two gunners could push up there further. Guardsmen advancing in the east, but Parnesia versus conscripts. We got that more tap tech firing away. Contra versus Pioneer, MG42 of course remains. So right now, Joe of course has the artillery advantage for the more tap tech, and he has a particular mobile artillery advantage compared with the Crazy Man, who obviously. Has none. But of course, gonna hit back there with the T70. I'm imagine anytime soon. He's also got a Panzer tank. In theory, we could actually upgrade the 47 upgrade squad size there now if you wanted to. I mean, it'd be a bit bold in some ways, but it could maybe allow to push a bit harder here. Joe faster. Maybe Joe would be a bit off prepared. Ill prepared for that. Contact suppressed. Joe remain in control of the battlefield association versus Crazy Man. But again, T70 is gonna happen anytime soon, and that should. Turn things around here for Crazy Man versus Joe. Gonna do something up here, center and west. There we go, T-Sun Light Tank alive for Crazy Man. Comes coming up, they're gonna do something with the Camden LMG 42. Maxim hosing away as well. Furiously so. 
teasing light tank halfway done. Gonna use it as the max of oh, comes from the west. More pushing towards straight to the fuel point, ignoring other points. Very good there by Joe. Knowing what matters most. Another incendiary barrage here from uh, Joe. On the maximum again. Ooh, catch the comes with the to retreat immediately. Oh Sukobliat. He's looking less good. And there it goes. Looks like Craven front realizes he needs to begin hitting the fuel point. Then moving up with the engineers from the minefreakers just in case Joe has been mining with S mines. Not a bad idea. Well, there you go. T some light tank out here for Crazy Man. The counter attack against the fascist commences. Punching on the around there for Joe and Deutschland. T7 is sending out. This could be a bit of trouble. We also got the pack four down. Obviously, T7 is going to get a front line. And T7 is swinging the game around in favor of the Red Army. There's some heavy damage. Need to go for that cold up another gun of the escort and the panzer fuzz. But there you go. Full retreat here on the left flank. Definitely up to. Oh, he does not the zoo. Perhaps wants to quick swing towards elsewhere. In his court, he did spot some S there from Joe. So good work there by Joe actually mining up. Oh, we need to get that T70 swing here versus the pony. Obviously, grab back the fuel point. A lot of things here that Chrisman needs to do versus Joe. And the German army. A mortar could also be an idea to consider here for uh, Crazy Man. Hey, mortar in particular could allow him just, you know, blast us out. Guard from Tina Head here, T centering about. Seems like Crazy Man is a bit hesitant in He of course might be worried he's gonna lose it to some surprise to Jove has hidden up his sleeve like a magician with guns. Punch the router by the max of machine gun. More sandbags up here for Crazy Man. Interesting position. Obviously wants to defend the area here. Has decided this is a good spot to do so. Interesting. Back here, truth reinforcing. Engineers heading out eastwards again. Concentrating about there. T center remains very passive. Giving Joe more time to think to stall out and for something bigger that so far is yet to take up. Parts goes on the fire from the T center and the maximum. More time to moving up as well. Seven kills on it. Veterans who won. Very good there. Very good. Dropping down those mortar bombs. Right on there, Max needs to get away very fast. Gasman good to go. Push for the western fuel point again. Comes to their flanked, their sandbag position. Wild Grip, there's a head on assault. Leaves them exposed to a flank here for the center. Of course, got a comes from Dune to deal with that. Grab the center, more time to come to be caught here by the laying down sandbox in the center again. And going for deep flank here on Joe's position. Got him for the position there. T7 remains very passive. It's almost you're wondering why he went for it in the first place if he's not using it at all. I can easily be a bit more active with it because right now for Crazy Man to really have a good chance, he needs to use the T70 as much as possible to put pressure on Joe and make it harder for Joe to do what he wants and to relax. But right now, it's almost as though the T-70 isn't there, which is great for Joe. It's certainly indicates, you know, detecting still a certain amount of fear into Crazy Man. And obviously, if your opponent is afraid of you, you usually get a lot more to do. Because, again, your opponent's going to be a lot, you know, less eager to make any sort of big maneuvers that can catch you off guard. Because, again, they're just afraid of you. So that would seem to there you go. t something up, but again, nope, he's using it very cautiously. Almost just like it's just a support weapon. That's still there to back up his infantry in certain situations. Also floating a bit of man pump. Crazy man I think would really benefit from some other field gun here or mortar. But a mortar I think would do a great deal of the hay mortar. You could just bombard the machine gun here. Opening up the eastern side. Could also use the deal with the pack 40. Though I don't think it's quite aware of its existence as of yet. Where Recon's out there from Joe. That's his second usage of Recon's Zoe flight. Very good there. But of course keeps him very much clear as to what Crazy Man is doing and where his position. Giving him more opportunity you know, well, you know make good attacks here against Crazy Man. And of course, direct the five as more tough as well. So there's a lot of advantages to uh, you know consistent reconnaissance air flights. There you go, catch with the counter by the center victory point there. Eight kills, half eight twenty-two. Sis three, almost done for Crazy Man. I'm guessing he's planning on a fast mechanized armor company, and then trying to rush a T fed force versus Jove, who is by the way taking up. He's in fact going straight for tier four. Jove in a wouldn't call it bold maneuver is going for the tiger tank here. Obviously, like. 
terms of what he's trying to do, which is skip tier three to uh, to sort of go straight for tier four on the targeting. It's a bit potent, like in terms of like the ideas of originality compared to how many players do it. It's not particularly bold. There you go. Can't make use of the engineers from moving up the right for coming up the right flank to then pull off a mortar of assault here and the machine gun. I still think a mortar would be better either way. Almost got the machine gun. Problem is, of course, there was no follow up. Should have used the T70 there, I think, to back it up further. T70 on the board on the west side. Almost got the pioneers. If he could get rid of that, that would be a bit helpful there for Crazy Man. Prevents uh, him from, uh, you know, repairing a build. Needs to replace the pioneers. Good work there. Good work. Field gun moving up. He's looking at the gun of these, and he's moving in. Push back. And turn the barrage there on the field gun again. Very good response there for Joe. Very quick. Very quick. And in fact, is more or less burning up the field gun crew immediately, killing it almost right away. 16 kills, 32 on the mortar half track. Better scrims on the right flank here. Con trying to push up there. In the center, Con's moving ahead this road, trying to threaten the 222. In the west, T-Sun versus Pan's gun of who have no chance of this. They've got a pack 40 moving up. Down to half health here. Come to them out and get off a Molotov. There we go. No tag up for this crazy man. Nothing further. Almost got the Panzers over the T70, but got the threat of the Pack 40, which he saw with the conscript. And lastly, he's pulling back the T70. Got the center victory point. Lost the eastern one. Can now push for the eastern fuel point. He wants to. Back here, troops reinforcing, healing, marking about. And a fuel cash up for Joe to help further push for that Tiger tank. At least he's, I would say, making some problem moves. And there you go. Mechanized armor company. I find happening for Crazy Man and the Red Armies. Very good. Very good. Dark Knight works for the Pack 40. Could actually take it out, maybe. But nope. Gets away. Second fuel. Oh, there you go. He actually moves the fuel cache from away from the cutoff point to the other point there. Since otherwise it's going to be a bit exposed. That could easily be cleared out. Whereas he's less. You usually don't see a lot of enemy movement around here. Setting up the fuel cache. This is a great idea. Thumbs up there to Joe. Mechanized armor company almost done. You can go for a fast T-34 from the 6. You might just go for the T-3045. Guys from there holding up behind the heavy cover. Fans moving forward there. Backed up here by the 2-2. They do get the combined arms bonus, which makes it a bit harder to kill. Quickly getting out of cover here to pop a grenade at them. Interesting. In particular, since again backed up in the 2-2, they can quickly get out of its way anyway, since of course they aren't just harder to hit, they also just move faster near a 2-2-2. So that uh, combined arms ability there pays off greatly there for Joe. And pretty much just collapses the morale there of the guards. We've got a munitions cash out as well, probably setting up for mock grades, mines, incendiary barrages, or even fragmentation bombs. Joe's very close to the Tiger Tank now. He's almost got the resources. Crazy Man there, I think, is going for a T-35 and a 5 here. But it's only quite something with a bit of oomph there versus the Tiger Tank. Coming up the right side. Finally getting a big push there for the fuel point going in. Joe, those heading hard on the west. Meanwhile, though, how will Crazy Man react to this? How will he respond to this Teutonic fate? He's going for the victory point, not the fuel point. Rushing for the building there, gets suppressed. Feels a bit awkward there. Back here, troops are enforcing. Got the gas in there, apparently, he accidentally uh, going into whatever it's called there, the ability. Let's not hit the dirt. Take aim, bang positions. Two uh, sons are going to use here. Half eight of XD2. Losing the Western Fuel Point. Finally going for the Eastern Fuel Point there. We got the 2-2 moving in. Bit slow this round there by uh, Crazeman and finally getting there. He can soon go for the T-3045. Gaspin still remaining very much immobile within the base of Crazeman and the Red Army. Excuse me, we got the Panzer the Half-A-22 though without support from the 2-2. They are easier targets now. There we go, T-3485 on the way there for Crazeman. Of course, going to be up against the Tiger Tank, which is going to hit any moment now. I imagine he's got an idea about that. Oh, it's not biscuits. Sorry about that. There we go. I know for some reason, occasion like it'll just switch like the HUD out there from the new replay HUD to the old one. So I do apologize about it. I do apologize. Not much you can do about it. Sometimes like just press a button and it goes off like that.
Well, the T-34 almost done. Titans about to hit here for Job and the German army. So an indicator there that he's back. Been doing quite well here versus Crazy Man to some degree. And then again, Crazy Man is just not been doing a very effective job at actually disrupting Joe's resources. He's just putting up sufficient pressure despite having a T-70. In this regard, Crazy Man has probably been a bit too fixed on the center victory point rather than again trying to deny Joe resources and you know, controlling the flow of the battle more. Which is, of course, then what Joe's proceeded. I mean, he's got, got the center victory point, but now there's a Tiger tank inbound. Got Maxim Field and coming at Tifa farming Westford. Sighting the straight hit, shoots at the field gun. Gets a kill then, Yuri. Oh, he's got a fragmentation bomb. He could try and call in the field gun if it becomes necessary. I mean, the Tiger tank is making short work of the field gun here, to be honest. Forcing Crazy Man to fall back with it already. He's like going to go for another one. Mortify going off here from the mortar half track. Half eight to Vetsni 3 almost. Yeah, finding positions is what's called. Coming from the eastern side, T7 moving in as well. They got the Titan, they're moving up. Field gun. It's going to have to get up. Let's support again. Direct down the T7 from the target tank. Field gun eats it up. Set up. Slick over the yard. And the T7, his main gun is up, but he does survive the encounter with the target tank and it's eight hitting on the gun. Field gun shoots, bounces off the target tank's 100mm thick Krupp steel armor. As Joe seems to be lining up for another assault already here. Meanwhile, Crazy Man is licking his wounds and trying, I think, to get his things in order. He's going to need another field gun. So a good chance as a tiger. Joe's going to say Joe's been executing his strategy smoothly. I mean, he's actually been building cash to support it. Making sure that whatever's like small advantage he's sort of been gaining mid-game, you can sort of you know, transfer into like something bigger late game. It's a very good play there by Joe. One Cindy Abarage is here from the Mortar Half Track. 18 kills. Definitely half eight of it in three now and steadily getting there. Tanks need repairs. Comes from the eastern side. Got mines in case Joe decides to raid the base, but Joe clearly has no interest in that. Since you know there's no fuel on the enemy base he can destroy. Front of the east, there you go. S Mount taking off from the consoles there. Taking neatly casualties, more spawns going off there. Good work, and there you go. Full white there. <laughs> All white. You really got to be mindful of those S mines. They can be really nasty. I'm guessing Crazy Man is probably feeling a bit stressed now. Which is causing him to make those mistakes. Back here, troops in reinforcing. Still not sound the additional field gun here. Anything else? Titan up for the centre strike here, right at his field gun, which is not quite set up. The T for opening up. Shot bounce from the field gun. Titan meanwhile is having no such issues. Red hit from the T for five. There you go. Field gun crew goes down to the tiger tank. Down it goes. Tiger tank is taking some damage right now. The situation crazy man is a bit awkward. He needs to get that field gun back. There you go. Can't make a run for it. Oh, he's going to try and head man to tank grenade, then crew it up. Having a chance of taking out the tire tank with that. A bold move, bold move, but could work out, could work out. Shot fire, bounced. Second shot from the field gun, there goes through. Molotov will be in the pants, they push straight for the field gun here. T-Fit opening up. Assault here is Sam not able to take out the field gun. Bun grenade almost got the pants, they're mopping up here. But they go uh, themselves now at risk of being mopped up by Crazy Man's forces. Another shot here. Narrowly misses the tiger tank. He's at least inside and he's with minesweepers just in case there's more mines from Joe and he's certainly been very excited about those S mines. Very excited. Crazy man healing the field gun back. Still no sign of anything else. Surprised he hasn't gone for another field gun to be honest. That'd be like the common maneuver here when encountering a tiger tank. In particular, we don't really have much else but the field guns to stop it. So I'm a bit surprised he at Crazy Man's lag. They got more speed out there from Job. Again, ascertaining where Crazy Man is and isn't. So that would deal with him. Also, in this case, I'm just deal with the T-Send more effectively. 2-2 two two there again in the east as well. Further problems there for Crazy Man. s mounts going off them treating engineers. T-45 need repairs once more. Having suffered extensively at the hands of... Uh, Job and the German army. Target them was good to go there for Job. Come out the western side. Mortify rain down like drops of death. It's just the almost done there for, or on the way, finding the way there for Crazy Man. Finally, he's going for the second one. 
Okay, main, main Indian Nation family had a better chance of the Tiger tank, though. Back at base for Joe, nothing further going on. He could easily build a support core, get our armor that way. He could theory like go for the heavy panzer core. Contra taking our hit from the target tank. 12 kills. Shot fired. Missed. Great on the conscript. Says three lands a great hit on the target tank. Piers on the front slam. Another says three out. Target tank advances though. Metro MG1 gain. Western Lake Point being lost once more. Needs to concentrate at the top. They got a T team going up for deep flanky against Joe. Though, of course, needs to be careful with that pack 40 about. T for the father repaired using silver repairs. And there you go, going straight for the Panzer, which is holding here by the victory point. Close one there. And Joe's response, as always, is swift and incendiary. Like one of Trump's tweets. Contraband against the Indonesia backed up, but then you need some more fire support there. Pioneers hard to work back to get the heavy pants got there for Joe. And he's about to get Panzer fans off in the T70. There you go. Main gun out in the T70 field and shoots. Almost got the Tizu, but the Tizu gets the T70. Pop smoke and destroys it through the smoke. Field gun shoots and misses the 2 2, two Knocking off dirt right in front of it in the smoke. Another T45 on the way there for Crazy Man. And we got Joe with a Panther, a Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Pride of the Fatherland. Tide tank there at half health, also half eight of XC2 roughly. Machine gun fire car in the center there. Keep moving up. They could try and flank the mortar and take it out. There it goes, shoots. Narrowly hits it. Or misses it, but actually does some damage with the AOE. Close one there for Crate Man, they're very close. But the Mortar Arctic survives by Ace Mortar Arctic, not something you see very often in, uh, well, the last couple of years of Camus 2. There you go, second T for the part there for Crate Man. Of course, the problem is it's going to be up against a Tiger Tank and a Panther. Plus a Pack 40 backing all up. Not impossible, of course, for Crazy Man. It's going to require some really good handling of his assets. Sandbags out there. Got these and watch. There's a try and line up for the sort of the Western Victor Point. Going to take a hit. They got them in forward. Especially three there. And we got the Panther out here, the Panzer Kampfwagen 5. Defects for that. Got them forward. Hits into the line for the target tank. Close vintage on that one. More tough taking to rain down death as well. Field gun there caught in another inferno here as Joe just continues to deliver that fire. In the west here, Panther getting T-35 going in aggressively here. Joe shows no mercy or any restraint. Caution is thrown to the wind. Tiger tank moving ahead here now. Could catch here the T-35 in the double fire here between the Panther and the Tiger tank. Target tank getting ready to be taking heavy damage now. He's suffering from extensive firepower there now. All of a sudden, from Crazy Man. Panther also falling back here, even if he's suffered no damage now. That could rapidly change in the face of two field guns and those T 45s. But so far here, Joe still remains in a strong position. Crazy Man is just falling a bit short here versus Joe. Maximum crawls are wiped out. Not good. Unless, of course, you're Joe, in which case that is pretty damn good. Panther going to hit going straight for the T-55, there he goes, shoots, misses, in return. The South Panzer flanking up here, good flank here by Joe, good maneuver. Third and crew being hosed down here by the Panzer Grenadier, ruthlessly and mercilessly. Constant guards from counter-attacking against the Panzer Grenadier, heavy fire there. And there you go, routed once more. A real crazy man, while he has a sizable force, it's kind of small compared to Joe's. And well, Joe just has more in a sense. Also, I think, also, of course, more crucially, Joe, I think, is handling it a bit better than Crazy Man. I feel like for a good part of the fight, has remained perhaps a bit too uh, passive. At least Timmy here versus Joe. A few hits there. 
Titan should hit Filgan's not quite angles as a good deal with that. 2 to 2 takes a hit, but the Titan should hit for the Filgan, taking it out there with machine gun and main gun. Almost got the Filgan crew hit, Tifa is moving in. Titan taking repeated hits here, one Filgan though it's already down. Filgan turns again, but once more the Tiger Tank swoops out of its arc of fire. Good hit in the teeth if I almost got it. Field and recruit opening up there in Joe's Tiger Tank. Shots bouncing though. We got 70 points left here for Crazy Man. Comes to push back the Panther there. Damage in his engine. Teeth if I going for the Tiger. Or does he? Panther taking heavy damage. Getting Panther faster there. As once more Joe launches a counter attack. Clearing up both field guns now. And both of. Crazy Man Sanks can't really assist him anymore. Joe's target just continues to deliver the violence. There you go. Crazy Man renders a loss here for the Red Army. A victory for Deutschland. Well, I think Crazy Man sometimes had the upper hand. The way he ended up playing, I think, was too passive. And again, tunnel mission in the center victory point. If ignored, really sort of disrupting Joe's resources. And I feel like you could have made some better picks. Like, for example, at some points, the fluid manpower could have gone for more. So that would put more pressure on Joe's support weapons. Could have laid down smoke. But it just, you know, blast out the machine and open the eastern side more often. And I feel like that we got compared, and then on top of that, Joe's also much better, of course, at maneuvering and disrupting his resource. Really just meant Crazy Man was slowly just uh, being uh, left behind here by Joe, and I think that over left to Joe's uh, victory there. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell your friends, share your family, but don't tell your enemies. This is Imperial Links and Cheers. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you all tomorrow again for another episode. Bye.